Now we move uh, forward indeed toward the end. And as uh, per tradition, we have an honorary lecture and uh, a great honorary name, of course, is uh, the one of uh, Dr. Attilio Cavezzi, a neighbor of mine in Italy, a dear friend and a mentor as well. He will be talking about graduated compression innovations in peripheral arterial disease. Here is his uh, talk and then we will have him live with us. Thanks, Sergio, for your kind invitation. Uh, my role is to speak about uh, graduated compression innovation for peripheral arterial disease. This is my disclosure slide. Uh, so we know that during the treatment of chronic venous disease, uh, we may have some comorbidities such as uh, diabetes mellitus and peripheral arterial obliterating disease, which have been considered the kind of possible contraindication when using medical compression stockings. This is a very interesting document, an international consensus document from a lot of very high level experts concerning the recommendations on the possible contraindication and risk of uh, compression. Basically, these experts highlighted that there is a possible risk of complication in case of severe peripheral arterial obliterating disease and severe microangiopathy uh, in diabetic patients. And so some specific precautions were advised in diabetes and uh, let's say in when using medical compression stocking in peripheral arterial disease with let's say an ABPI below 0 0.9. But when we have a much worse condition such as ABPI below 0 0.5 or even more when the systolic ankle pressure is below 60 millimeter of mercury, then probably compression stocking could be considered, or compression in general, could be considered a contraindicated. So this study in 2012 highlighted quite good outcomes applying a compression at mild level, 18-25 millimeter of mercury, in patients with diabetes and edema. From the point of the edema, uh, it was good, but especially there was uh, no uh, relevant uh, uh, side effects in these patients, and even the ABPI improved at two weeks, uh, which was not true anyway at three and four weeks. Uh, this is another study where they applied 18 to 21 millimeter of mercury medical compression stockings in patients uh, with peripheral arterial disease, and as you can see here, wearing the stockings uh, led to a, an, an increase of. Uh, uh, let's say systolic arterial pressure in the big toe and also both arterial and chronic venous insufficiency symptoms improved. This is a, another study from a French group which was published two years ago in VASA and uh, uh, they uh, uh, assessed the possible side effects and they found basically no uh, specific problem in terms of tolerance in these patients and they had no worsening of their arterial and venous symptoms reporting no adverse effects. Now let's come to a very interesting study which was published more recently uh, last year in patients with chronic venous disease and peripheral arterial obliterated disease or diabetes mellitus. This was a controlled trial investigating the safety of medical compression stockings in these patients. Uh, 94 study participants were enrolled. Uh, there was a healthy subject control group, a patient with the arterial disease and patients with the, uh, mel diabetes mellitus type 2. All patients had uh, edema and they applied two different kinds of stockings, 18 to 21 or 23 to 32 millimeter of mercury, specially designed medical compression stockings for these patients. The primary endpoint was to assess the safety of these stockings. The secondary endpoint to assess, was to assess the comfort of wearing these stockings. In this um, table, basically what you can see is that um, in terms of safety, the changes in the microcirculation were not relevant. So that means that both class one and class two stocking the specific stocking had uh, a stable microcirculation in physiological positions on the in terms of oxygen saturation on the contrary there were some worse there were there was some worsening uh, when lifting when elevating the legs that means that both in healthy controls and in these uh, arteriopathic patients uh, uh, lifting the limbs led to some worsening of oxygen saturation. This was true also with blood flow perfusion. So 
let's say that uh, the study demonstrated from the safety point of view that a specific medical compression stockings uh, did not lead to any specific changes uh, in the oxygen saturation and blood flow perfusion beyond the risk of the elevated limb position. From the secondary end point of view, the very comfort was very high, as you can see from the Likert type scale, the vast majority of the patients showed a, let's say, a high wearing comfort. So the conclusion of this study was that in this first study, which evaluated the medical compression stocking specific device in two uh, different groups of uh, arteriopathic and diabetes patients, basically resulted uh, in, uh, in the absence of uh, relevant side effects, both with class one and with class two, the microcirculation was stable beyond the possible deterioration when the leg was elevated. Uh, these uh, results were somehow anticipated even in, uh, let's say, mixed venous ulcer uh, in the presence of concomitant arterial occlusive disease, where in this study with um, Giovanni Mosti, Professor Pacci, we could highlight how the treatment of the recalcitrant leg ulcer was improved with uh, uh, modified compression, even in presence of uh, arteriopathy. This is a very recent study where, again, diabetic patients showed basically no deterioration, if uh, not an improvement, uh, when using compression uh, tailored compression, let's say, and from sclerotherapy to treat their venous or mixed leg ulcer. So the usage of compression, again, did not result in any specific deterioration, if not in an improvement of the final outcomes. This is an elegant review on the compression used in arterial venous leg ulcers, and they somehow promoted the use of uh, uh, a compression with the pressure between 20 and 30 millimeters of mercury to improve the healing of the mixed arterial venous lymphatic ulcer. So to make it short, uh, adequate compression therapy, and to go to the end, adequate compression therapy has uh, uh, a contrasting degenerative tissue changes in arteriopathy, which means that adequate compression therapy can increase rather than decrease arterial microcirculation perfusion, so increase at the arteriovenous gradient, can reduce, of course, edema, which means that we can reduce my means of compression, the uh, compression on the capillaries and the, the distance between nutritional capillaries and the tissue cells, even when using low pressure. And if we look at all these, uh, uh, let's say, uh, different uh, pro-inflammatory mediators, we see that compression can reduce the expression of these mediators, thus enhancing the condition, the clinical condition. Sincerely, thanks to everybody. And uh, it is uh, us deeply thanking uh, Attilio for the honor. A question to you, Attilio. We, we know that there is basically no difference, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in below versus above knee when we are talking about post thrombotic syndrome. But when we are talking about these patients, would you see when there is PAD involved? I mean, a difference, of course, up to my knowledge, there is uh, no data. But uh, we know that there could be uh, an effect on the stabilization, for example, of the joints, thanks to compression. So even if I don't have data, I usually prefer to prescribe above knee when I see that there are also postural defects, considering these might be older than the usual patients of ours. Do you see some potential interest in this or not for future research? Well, that's an interesting issue because somehow we may have patients who have also most of the peripheral arterial vitreating disease are elderly. So they may have some joint problems. And with the below knee stocking, you may induce some uh, knee edema, what we see from the clinical practice. So it's a good issue to think about the, the thigh stocking instead of the below knee stocking. What counts, of course, is the level of the compression at the ankle level. Uh, so anyway, it could be an option to make a study, let's say, because we have no data as well. Thank you so much. Joe, would you like so, to make some comment on, on this? Uh, yes, I would. I think that that's a brilliant uh, and forward-thinking suggestion because uh, uh, there are many issues uh, with patients, uh, the, the, as already mentioned, and I really think we need to take a look at this. The problem is 
that it's very difficult to apply and remove uh, and also fit people uh, because a lot of times they have very large thighs and that's an impediment. But this needs to be looked into uh, more carefully. And also, there's no reason why we have to get away from this concept of graduated compression alone. Uh, we'll discuss that at the end in, in what Giovanni has taught us and others. And, and that, that principle probably would be very well suited to use in this type of a hybrid uh, longer leg stocking. Thank you so much. And now we fly all uh, the way to Egypt. A dear friend, I would have liked to introduce him, but it will be Oscar doing that. Oscar? Do we have Oscar with us? Unmute yourself. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> now we travel to Africa to present Professor Hussein, President of the African Association of Vascular Surgery, founder of the Vascular Society of Egypt. Professor Hussein. Yes, uh, good afternoon. And uh, it's really a great, uh, great initiative. Um, compliments to um, you, Oscar, and Sergio, and Willie, but uh, very quickly, in one minute, uh, I'd like to ask one question. Um, we have traditionally known uh, post revascularization of uh, peripheral arterial circulation uh, ischemic patients that when they develop uh, uh, leg and foot edema due to uh, reperfusion uh, uh, syndrome, uh, that um, compression therapy might help. We have known that over the years. But my question is, um, which is the best uh, candidate patient among those suffering from POD and having CVI as well. Um, are we talking predominantly about uh, those uh, 2A or 2B patients, uh, uh, ischemia patients, uh, with ABIs less than 0.8 and more than 0.5? Uh, and uh, which is the one uh, recommended objective test uh, to measure by sensors uh, the um, uh, tolerance of the microcirculation and foot perfusion. Thank you. Well, that's a complicated question, let's say, but on, on one side, I would say that once you perform a revascularization, you expect the limb improves from the uh, arterial perfusion. So somehow, even if the index is uh, around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, is still a good indication to compress the limb just after the revascularization. Also because we should remember that sometimes we injury the lymphatic vessels during the, uh, the operation, which is another point to compress because edema is always a question of a, a lymphatic or because injured or because overwhelmed, let's say, on one side. And as to the, the let's say, the way to assess the, 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 the perfusion, we know that the near infrared spectroscopy or the pressure of the two oxygenation are good, but we all know that somehow they are not so fully available everywhere. So still Doppler is interesting. I would say one important thing. I take a while, 30 seconds more, Sergio, sorry. When okay. I was very young, it was in the 86, 88, we performed a very long study on taxi drivers and we found much more easily their peripheral arterial obliterating disease using the post-exercise ankle brachial index, which is much more sensible, sensitive to detect this arterial disease. So this is another issue which we could take into consideration, not just the, the basal index, but the post-exercise, because that you would highlight much more easily and much more anticipated uh, the issue of a, a, an arterial disease. This is something we should take into a consideration during the studies. Thank you so much, uh, Tig, and thank you so much to Professor Hussein. I, I'm happy to share with uh, the colleagues, uh, Professor White and Dr. McMurray, that also Professor Hussein has enjoyed uh, presence uh, and affiliations uh, with the Uniform uh, uh, Services uh, of USUS. Uh, so it's a very, very beautiful group, as we all know, and we are really happy to have them with us uh, today. Let's uh, go on uh, flying around the world. I wish uh, it was me introducing our Queen Pauline, but it will be Willie. I would just say that she's uh, the perfect presence uh, for uh, uh, project dedicated to residents. She has been uh, teaching uh, uh, phlebology splendidly in a lot of courses uh, for the new generations in Canada and worldwide. Willie? Well, I don't think Pauline needs any instructor, uh, introduction from us. She's uh, obviously a leading figure, not in Canada, but also in the world. Uh, a very special friend to the VUN Foundation. Pauline? 
Uh, thank you very much, Sergio and uh, Willie. Uh, my question is for Atilio and uh, congratulations first Atilio for uh, opening my eyes on uh, this, uh, I would say innovative concept. Um, my question is uh, because there's a, uh, a certain percentage of patients with uh, combined uh, CVI and PAD, would a different approach to graduated compression using progressive compression mentioned by Dr. Santiago uh, that applies maximal pressure over the calf instead of over the ankle be superior with respect to improvement of pain and lower leg symptoms on patients without edema? Well, okay, that's a good question, of course, Pauline. I think we would need, uh, let's say, a randomized control study to answer this question properly, of course. Progressive uh, compression is interesting because you focus on the calf, which is extremely important, for example, uh, especially in post-thrombotic syndrome where you have a lot of issues with popliteal vein and whatever around the calf. In peripheral arterial disease, of course, not to have a high pressure at the ankle is another interesting issue. That's why to tailor the proper stocking and also the way of knitting the stocking is important. So I cannot answer you properly. It's a matter of uh, the tissue that you use, uh, the fabric that you use, the wearing, uh, the, 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 the knitting and so on. So it, it's something that we should take into consideration for the future. Thank you, Atilio. You're welcome. And we move uh, forward, uh, flying all the way to Thailand. It's uh, my deep honor and pleasure to introduce uh, a dear friend, and I look forward for collaborations also among our institutions from the university. It is uh, Professor Nutaut from Idol University. Nutaut? Here we are. Yes, thank you, Sergio. I have one question for Professor Kawefi. In diabetic patient, medial calcification cause incompressible artery and then make the ABI measurement is higher than normal. In this patient, do we need to measure toe pressure or toe pressure baker index instead of measuring ABI? Thank you very much. Well, that's a very classical uh issue that we may raise in diabetic patients. That's why we should prefer whenever possible the two measurements on one side. Again, I would reinforce the issue of the post-exercise ankle brachial index. This is another interesting possibility we have. And uh, somehow uh, I prefer in case of compression stocking to rely on the absolute systolic pressure more than the anterior brachial index, especially in these patients. But we know about the issues of neuropathy and about the microcirculation and so on and so on. So we know that probably toe measurement would be better in these patients at the end. But again, it's not so easy in most clinics or in most offices. Uh, that's why we should tailor the compression to the patients we have. And that's why doctors exist, let's say. Thank you so much, Professor Nuto and Attilio. I would uh, take this time for an open question to the panel because uh, Pauline really triggered uh, an interesting one, I think. Uh, I, we know from progressive compression, up to my knowledge, that we have an improvement in the ejection fraction, basically. And uh, we know that uh, with uh, a dose effect, uh, they demonstrated in electromyography that the triceps ure is having less fatigue uh, with more pressure rather than less. Now I'm a little bit confused if we, if we should work more on the anti-edema effect, so we wouldn't need that much pressure for these patients or on the hemodynamic effect for reducing the overload or maybe both, or maybe changing uh, the, the features of, of the stockings for different uh, resting rather than working pressure. Of course, I would start with everyone apart, Joe, who will be the final truth uh, for the answer. So if there is somebody who wants to jump in. I mean, if you want me to tell something, Please. we know that most studies were focusing on edema. So that was uh, the aim of uh, the stocking and the aim of uh, the, the study, let's say. So if we talk about edema to patients, then we know that we need the, this kind of approach. When you focus, as you properly told, on the claudication, for example, on the muscle fatigue, that could be another, uh, let's say, target for another kind of stocking, probably. But so far, I would see stockings in edema, especially. 
Thank you, Tilly. Any other comment from the panel? Fabricio, I see you're moving or? Yes, Fabricio. Oh, yes, the, the, the problem is the, uh, we also have the misconception that arterial patients only, we need to improve their, uh, their, their uh, microcirculation. Not only that, we need to increase their resistance to uh, uh, lactic acid. So uh, when you talked about fatigue, uh, uh, Eduardo Damata has, has some uh, very nice results here, uh, here using uh, rep devices on claudication uh, patients. So increasing their resistance, their claudication distance using rep devices, uh, compressing more the, 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 the upper leg rather than the, the, the ankle. So probably this is caused by the by increasing the resistance of the resistance of as the acid lactic. So this is something that we should that we use on patients when we are trying to make them to exercise themselves. Okay. Thank you. For I think this, this that, that should be a reasoning. Thank you. We have a, a question from the audience. Then we will move with Joe, and then we will close. So it's Eduardo Valifuoco. Uh, Attilio, if you want to have a look at that, it is, uh, what do you think about the use of mechanical progressive peristaltic compression of legs to reduce edema and improve arterial blood flow rather than elastic bandages or stockings? The obtained good results could be maintained by non-elastic bandage. There is a lot to discuss over here. Well, I mean, uh, we are talking probably about intermittent pneumatic yeah. compression. So that means that it's a very interesting technology. We know that. It, probably not every single patient has the possibility to have this device at home or applied, let's say, in an office, in a medical office or whatever. So it's interesting. There is a lot of literature about that. So I would absolutely accept it. Stocking is more practical from this point of view if you have to reduce edema. The issue of uh, inelastic material, okay, I understand it because we should prefer inelastic material or low elasticity material. So I think that somehow the most la the latest models they provided in the, on the market somehow uh, uh, listen to our need of a proper knitting and the high uh, work pressure and low rest pressure. So again, intermittent pneumatic compression is interesting, but stockings are more practical, say. Thank you. And also more validated because up to my knowledge, we don't have agreement in the guidelines about standard protocols. Joe, would you like to, to give us the finale and then we move forward? Just for this comment then. Well, I think that um, I can't believe how much I've learned today <laughs> from all of you from all over the world. I came in here with all of my preconceived ideas and singing this song that I sing all the time, short stretch compression, Velcro compression and so forth. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I have learned from all of you around the world because of the fact that there are different uh, situations in different countries and different products available. And all of the comments that were just made, I think are extremely valuable and we need to, to push forward. The, the one comment on this that I think is, is uh, two things are really key. Number one is the industry has been very resistant to the progressive concept. They have yet to produce a good stocking, uh, a progressive stockings other than for special studies. And that's, that resistance based on the dollar is, is, a, is, is, is a frustrating thing. And the second thing is, and I would just throw this out, prevent that, that awful trial that was in the New England Journal that sort of put the kibosh on using pneumatic compression in addition to low molecular weight heparin for prophylaxis was was totally blown away by Cyril Lobostov's excellent super IPC study, plus the fact that every patient that gets an anesthetic needs pneumatic compression uh, because of all the changes that go on during surgery. All of that having been said, one of the most important issues that needs to be further put forth, as all of you have said, is the multiple uses of IPC in patients with PAD. Thank you so much, uh, Joe, and thank you so much, Attilio, and all the top experts.